Well, the Honourable Trevor Mallard, I said to the member, there's less than 10 minutes remaining. I'll give the member a ballot two minutes. Thank, thank, you, uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. And it's, it's great to uh, follow uh, Tony Ryle. I think he's uh, got a reputation these days for being the choreographer to the Prime Minister, uh, Mr Speaker. And, and uh, it's interesting to see how he, even he was bored during his own speech. Uh, he, wasn't, he wasn't that interested. Four government members seemed to snooze off. Uh, and it's not the Tony Ryle, not the Tony Ryle of old. Uh, Mr Speaker, he is known around Wellington these days as the uh, Minister for Redundancy and Consultancy. Uh, he is causing redundancies all over Wellington, some very good payments uh, occurring. Uh, Wellington unemployment rates are up uh, in the last three months, the rate of increase twice any other area in the country, twice any other area in the country but there is a group that's doing very well under that minister, and that is the consultants. The consultants are doing really, really well. Uh, it's the National Party approach. Fire the public servants, give them redundancy, hire about half of them back again at about twice the wages, uh, and end up with none of the corporate knowledge. Uh, Mr Speaker, I think it's really interesting that Julia Gillard uh, as part of her preliminary comments as she was coming to New Zealand indicated that she saw New Zealand uh, as a source of skilled migrants. Isn't that a sad situation for New Zealand to be in? To have our nearest neighbour seeing us not as a partner, not as an equal, but a place where they can have their training needs met by employers uh, and by uh, our institutions in New Zealand and people just to go off overseas. Uh, and, Mr Speaker, the trouble is that at the moment she is right. There are just, I think, all of us, all of us know friends, family, constituents, people who uh, live in our area who are upping stakes and going to Australia because that is where they can get a job and that is where they can have a reasonable standard of living. It's where their standard of living is, you know, one and a third, one and a half times in real terms what they can get in New Zealand. And, Mr Speaker, it is getting worse because wages in real terms in New Zealand are going down while wages in real terms in Australia uh, are going up. Uh, Mr Speaker, we've, we've heard Bill English talk about his mom his mixed ownership model, uh, but, but actually I think a lot of us on this side are, uh, are trying to work out what the dad would be, the uh, disastrous asset ditching or the, uh, the dog's addition to Dipton, or uh, there's, a, there's a number of approaches, a, a number of things that the way that it could be described, but I thought the uh, Leader of the Opposition just hit the nail on the head today when he asked the question that Bill English could not answer on behalf of the Prime Minister. And, and, that, and that was, why would you, when you have a 15% return on an asset, and it's only costing you 6%, why would you give it up? Why would you, why would you give it up? You have the, the member says it's a risky investment. Well, I tell him that I don't think Kiwis over the years have paid their taxes to build dams around the country as they did under NZED. None of them would regard it as a risky investment. I agree that there are some questions about the valuation, and I, I, I said that uh, I noticed that he thought that they were overvalued. They were overvalued when he came to the Finance and Expenditure Committee. That's an interesting approach because they're valued on the same basis uh, as the private sector companies. And I would have thought if you were a minister trying to hock off your assets, saying that they're going to go cheaper is hardly the responsible approach to take, uh, sir, but, but that's, um, uh, that, that is the approach that he's taking. Uh, Mr Speaker, I'm not suggesting that we go out and gamble on the stock market. What I am suggesting is that we do not sell the things that people have paid for for years and years and years. They're paid for in their power prices. They're paid for in their taxes. He wants to sell them off and he wants to pay off debt and end up with a minus 9% return on it. 
That's what he wants. The return is 9 per cent less. Uh, Mr Speaker, difference between 15 and 6 for Craig Foss. That, that, is, that, 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 is, that is the difference. The 10-year bill rate is 55 or 6 per cent. The average return for the last five years has been 15 per cent, and he, he wants to sell it. Uh, Mr Speaker, I, I think it's about the level uh, of economics that we had uh, back when, uh, in the period just after he was Leader of the Opposition, or maybe while he was still Leader of the Opposition, uh, when Don Brash was suggesting that we should all sell our houses and rent them. That, was, that is a sort of approach. It, what he wants people to do, what he wants New Zealand to do, is to divest itself of assets, to send them offshore, to send the ownership of them offshore. He wants to sell to Australians, to Chinese and to Americans our power companies, which we have paid for for years and years and years. And, and we had, Mr Speaker, today in the House, um, Simon Power, who's meant to be the Minister of State and Enterprises, indicating his ignorance and saying that no one could buy a cornerstone investment in an, in an SOE under his scheme because they couldn't get 51 per cent. Well, I'll tell him that he should go back up to his room, have a chat with the three or four people uh, up in his office who understand a little, about, a little bit more than a country lawyer uh, about the way stock markets work, uh, and, sir, they will tell him they will tell him that there's a range of definitions, but there's not much doubt 12, 15 per cent is regarded as a cor cornerstone investment, and those owners have rights, and they have rights that can block the majority shareholder doing what they want to do, even when that's in the interest of the country. I want to leave one comment, uh, Mr Speaker, and it's a discussion I had uh, with a cleaner yesterday whose husband is also a cleaner who was just absolutely wrapped at the idea that they would both get $10 a week, they would both get $10 a week, $1,000 a year for a poor family, family $1,000 a year for a poor family because, because the Labor Party says that you won't pay on the first 5,000 of tax. And, and, and Mr, Mr English, Mr English is doesn't like paying cleaners very much. He doesn't like paying, except if they live in his house, no, not his house, the house that he was leasing from a trust that he's a beneficiary of. Wasn't his house, wasn't his house. It was a, it was a house that he was leasing from, from the trust he was a beneficiary of. Mr Speaker, Bill English, Bill English is someone who has no credibility he is someone who is making a fool of the government, I'm and sir, the, the end of the year comes come soon enough. Expired. <laughs> Members, the question is that the motion be agreed to. Those who are of that opinion will say aye. aye. The contrary opinion will say no. no. The, the ayes have it. No. Party voters call for. Clerk, please conduct a party vote. New Zealand National, 58 votes in favour. The member wishes to correct her vote. 57 votes in favour. 57 in favour. New Zealand Labour, 42 votes opposed. Green Party, 9 votes opposed. Act New Zealand, 5 votes in favour. Māori Party, 4 in favour. Progressive? One vote opposed. United Future? One vote in favour. The Honourable Chris Carter? Any other votes? Members, the ayes are 67, the noes are 52. The motion is agreed to. Point, point of order. Point of order, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Speaker, it's, it's just a, a matter of clarification as to, the, uh, as to the, the, the rules on this. I think we, we are aware, uh, I think we're all aware that, the, um, that there are enough Māori Party members in the House uh, to vote five. 
Uh, is this an indication that Mr Harawira's vote should be uh, given order, separately? Order, order, no. Order, the member can, can use the point of order for that. Uh, it's entirely up to the party how they cast the votes and how many they cast. The one thing they can't do is cast more votes than they've got allocated seats. The parties can, if they so choose, cast less for reasons which remain reasons for that party. Fewer. Fewer. Okay. I now call on Government Order, order of the Day number one. Appropriation.